Welcome to Clinton's Corner on a Monday. My name is Clinton Jarman. As usual on a Monday here at the Fair Digest, we bring you sports news from the weekend from around the world as well as South Africa. So let's get straight into it then. On the weekend, there was some NFL action, some American football. Um, the Patriots, they took on the Giants. This was last week, Thursday. Patriots in this one, they won 35-14. Um, the Patriots... Uh, struggled early on was I think 14, 14 all at half time but then you know the Pats um, had enough to get past the Giants in the end there um, quite quite easily um, so the Pats move now to six and zero in their record six wins thus far no defeats looking good for the Pats then uh, Seahawks they uh, they have been the surprise package of the season. Um, Russell Wilson doing really well, hasn't thrown an interception yet, and I think 14 touchdown passes. Um, they continued winning ways. They won 32-28 over the Cleveland Browns, uh, the Browns struggling of late. The Seahawks now moved to 5-1, and one, and they want to look out for in their division. The Saints, they took on the Jags. Um, the Saints winning this one 13-6. The Saints now moved to a 5-1 and one record. Teddy Bridgewater and the Saints looking very good this season. Um, obviously, a lot of guys thought that, well, the, the Saints would struggle but without Drew Brees. But Teddy Bridgewater has been, been amazing for them. And uh, that defense has been great as well, only conceding the six points to the Jags. Although the Jags are currently struggling at the quarterback position. Um, moving on. The Chiefs, yes, the Chiefs. The Chiefs suffered their second loss of the season. That's two in a row now for the Chiefs, and this hasn't happened for the first, this is hasn't happened since 2013. So the Chiefs struggling there in that one. Um, they lost 24 31-24 to the Texans. Deshaun Watson and the Texans. Uh, Deshaun Watson actually running in two touchdowns for the Texans. The Texans now moved to four and two, as well as the Chiefs as well. Um, so the Texans want to look out for as well. Um, after beating um, a much vaunted Chiefs attack. Must be said though that the Chiefs defense is looking rather lackluster. The Vikings, they took on the Eagles. Um, the Vikings winning this one 38... 38-20, uh, sorry. Yes. Uh, Vikings bouncing back after a surprising loss to the Buccaneers where they conceded 55 points. Uh, sorry, that wasn't the Vikings, that was the Rams. Um, <laughs> my bad. Um, yeah, so the Eagles, you know, losing again. Uh, their record is now three and three. So the In Eagles, a bit their consistency just not quite there at the moment. Then moving on, the 49ers continued winning ways. They're now five and zero. Oh. Um, they won their game on the weekend, twenty points to seven over the Rams. The Rams lost to the Buccaneers last week, um, with fifty five points being put on their defense. Um, Rams also now 3-3, three and three, so very inconsistent to start their season as well. Um, the Super Bowl runners-up, not looking great at this moment in time. So the 49ers won that one 20 points to 7. Then Dallas, Dallas slipped to another defeat on the weekend. Yes, and they uh, they lost to the Chiefs, I mean, to the, sorry, to the Chiefs, they lost to the Jets. Uh, this one, 24-22. Um, Dallas fell behind early in this one. And, you know, Dak and the boys rallied back, but it wasn't enough. Went for an extra point to tie the game up at, right at the end, but uh, couldn't quite get it. So Dallas moved on to 3-3. Three and three. Um, And the Jets now with their first win. Good stuff. And then just to look ahead now for some games that are coming up. Um, the Colts and the Texans. Now, you remember the Colts were obviously the first team to beat the Chiefs this season, and the Texans the second. So... Should be a very interesting matchup that one. Um, other notables to look out for Dallas and Dallas versus Philadelphia. That Philadelphia Eagles that could be a great game with both teams three and three, both coming off losses, both looking to bounce back. Um, should be an interesting quarterback tussle there uh, between Dak Prescott and Carson Wentz. Now looking, um, sorry, looking, moving on to some world records over the weekend. Yes. So Kenya's Iliut Kipchonge, yes, Iliut Kipchonge ran a marathon in under two hours. Now, 
for for those of you who don't know, this was a feat that was considered to be impossible, much like the 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 four minute mile was considered to be impossible. This was considered to be utterly ridiculous as far as people were concerned. But um, yes, he, he he did it and did it with some time to spare, twenty seconds. In fact, he ran the marathon in one hour fifty nine seconds, fifty one hour fifty nine minutes and forty seconds. Um, just to put that in a bit of perspective, his average speed was 21 kilometers an hour. His average 100 meter pace was 17 seconds. And he repeated that 422 times. That is an outstanding achievement. And uh, one that I don't think that will be matched anytime soon. So congratulations to Kipchonge. Um, unfortunately, the, ref the, the record will be unofficial. Um, this is because... He had a number of uh, pace setting runners that came in and out and also it wasn't an open men's um, marathon event which means like it was basically just him running um, but nevertheless it's, it's a great achievement um, he did try before and he missed out by i think 26 seconds last time this time you know crushing the record um, and I, it's one that i think will stand the test of time i, I, I don't see it being beaten anytime soon but then again People did say that um, no one could run it under two hours. So, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, hopefully someone will step up one day and, and try and, you know, smash that record. But, you know, uh, congrats to Elliot Kipchonge and uh, yeah, keep running, man. Then just into some Rugby World Cup news now. There were a couple of games that were cancelled over the weekend due to the typhoon. Um... I must just say that it's it's you know I was, I was you know arguing about this well not arguing speaking about it with a couple of family members over the weekend and you know my father-in-law actually said that they they knew about you know that the this is sort of the typhoon season and these things could happen so they should have planned around it and it's always tough to plan around nature um, you can't really because you never know what's going to happen. You plan for it to happen and then it doesn't happen. Then you wasted all this money, blah, blah, blah. So I understand that the organizers wanted um, safety was paramount on the organizers list of things to do. So I understand postponing some of the games, especially games that, you know, the games that were postponed with Italy and New Zealand, England, France and Namibia, Canada. Now two of those are dead rubbers. Um, England and France, France might feel a little bit hard done by because they could have ended top of the group if they'd beaten England, but I, I don't think they would have beaten England anyway. So it's one of those where, yeah, it's a bit of a, it's a tough one for the French, but, you know, the English will take it and move on. Um, you know, it's also tough for the Minnow sides like, like uh, Namibia and Canada. So, you know, Canada or Namibia could have got their first win at a World Cup, so, but it wasn't to be. And that's unfortunate, you know, these things, unfortunately, we can't control the weather. So, um, as, as unfortunate as it is, I think safety was the, the, the paramount thing in the organizers' um, minds. And I think they made the right call at the end of the day. Then just looking at some results from the Rugby World Cup, Wales, they beat Uruguay 35-13. Um, and then Australia beat Georgia 27-8. Um, I actually watched a bit of this game, and Australia weren't convincing. Um, you know, Mike Checker is still looking for his best combinations, and when you, you kind of want to have that ironed out before you go into the quarterfinals. So, plenty of head scratching there for for, for Michael Checker into the next round. Um, Ireland they beat Samoa forty seven five. Now Samoa over the years have been not giant killers, but they've sort of held their own against the bigger sides, and to see Samoa not not really featuring in this World Cup has been sad for me because um, that Pacific Nation side is usually, they're usually quite strong and usually can make an upset or two, but wasn't to be in this year's World Cup. And, boom, 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 boom. and then looking at the, yes, the quarterfinals. Now, these are the, these are the, conf uh, no, sorry, Japan also, wonderful game against Scotland. Now, Japan are sitting pretty at the top of their pool and they just needed a win over Scotland, any sort of win. But they actually managed to get a bonus point win over Scotland, 28-21. Um, I did watch the game. It was was an entertaining game because um, Scotland scored first and you thought, uh-oh, here you go. 
a little bit of a spanner in the works maybe for the for the host nation because if Scotland had to win and deny um, had to beat Japan with a bonus point and deny Japan a, a losing bonus point then Japan would have gone home not very far for them to go admittedly but they would have gone home um, and they would have been watching the rest of the tournament from the uh, couch but it wasn't to be and Japan came out of the win um, and it was just great play from Japan, you know, some really slick handling skills, um, some poor kicking on their part, which made the game closer than it probably should have been because Scotland in the second half came back with some real vigour, but the Scots just couldn't, couldn't quite get over that little hump, um, which was the Japanese defence at the end of the day. So, you know, great for Japanese rugby that they in the quarterfinals and they topped their group actually. Um, unbeaten so that's perhaps warning signs for their next opponent speaking of their next opponent the quarterfinal matchups have been decided so England will take on their old foe Australia that's going to be a cracker of a game um, New Zealand Ireland now as I've mentioned before Ireland have been the only two the only side to beat um, New Zealand consistently over the last few years and New Zealand will be wary of the Irish. Maybe they have one more, one more um, big game in them. Um, yeah, then Wales will be taking on France. I think the Welsh should come through that one. France haven't looked quite on it in this World Cup. But you never know, the French, they always seem to just uh, turn up at the right time at the World, World Cup. And, and uh, you know, I remember... When was it? 2007. Yeah, 2007, although it was a, a forward pass in the end. Um, they turned up and they beat, the, uh, the, they beat um, the All Blacks. And, you know, everyone was sort of saying that that was New Zealand's sort of best team ever. And they, they gave the French no chance and they turned up and they won that game. So France always in with a chance. And that rhymes. I didn't mean that, by the way. Um... Then last but not least, Japan will play against South Africa. Now, South Africa having recently played Japan and, and beating them quite convincingly will be confident. But Jap Japan, since then, have not lost the game. And they've played the likes of Ireland and Scotland. So, um, should be a good game. Um, obviously, there will be a, a... I'll do a full look ahead in, in the Wild Pro tier on Friday. So, don't forget to tune in for that. Okay, right, and moving on quickly, don't mind me turning my page here. Cricket news now, the Proteas men, they lost by an innings and 137 runs. Ouch. Things are not looking good for the Proteas at the moment. And uh, yeah, so just a quick little match summary here. Obviously, we'll go into more detail on the Wild Protea on Friday, but here's the match summary. India, 601 declared. Virat Kohli, 254. Massive runs for the captain again. Rabada taking three wickets in our innings, looking the most likely bowler to strike as well. Um, I'm not going to get into too much detail, but our, our bowling just lacks potency at the moment. Um, and then our innings, yes, our innings. 275 all out, Faf Duplessis making 65, uh, Maharaj, Keshev Maharaj making 72. Um, him and Vernon Philander actually shared in a in a 100 odd run partnership at the end which made our scoreline look a bit respectable um, because we were a bit uh, behind the eight ball <laughs> if I want to see if you could say that Vernon also ending 44 not out uh, Ravi Chandran Ashwin taking four wickets and Kesh um, Keshev Umesh Yadav taking three wickets um, so spin and seam doing the trick there um, I think it was Yadav up front who who got through Markram, he got through Alga, um, and he, he set the ball rolling for the Indians. Um, boom, 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 boom. Then we batted again, they sent us in again, followed on. Um, we were bowled out for 189, guys. Uh, things are not going well with the bat. Dean Alga top scoring with 48. Ke um, I keep saying Keshe, why? Why on earth do I keep... It's, it's who me should have. That the man, my dog, just running into the wall. Um, sorry, um, Umesh Yadav, Umesh, Umesh Yadav, three wickets again, um, Ravi Jadeja, 
also three wickets in this one. Um, Dean Algo, the, I think I've said that already, Dean Algo the bat, he has top scored with 48. Yeah, tough tough times for the Proteas, guys. Um, I'm going to go a bit more in-depth on, on Friday in the Wild Protea with that one. Then our women, they lost their game um, by six runs against India. This was today, on Monday. Because today is Monday. Monday sucks. <laughs> um, I've lost my train of thought. Now I'm looking down, so I should be looking up. Um, India, yes. India were bowled out for 146. Uh, H, I don't know how to say this name. Uh, Core, K A U R, top scoring with 38. Uh, Marzane Cap um, did well for us, taking three wickets there. Um, Ishmael taking two, and Kaka taking two as well. Uh, so all the bowlers after that pretty much chipping in with some wickets. Um, our innings. Obviously didn't go according to plan. We got bowled out for 140, so obviously six runs shy of the target there. Um, Mazen Cap also getting 29 runs, not really much to... There was a few others who chipped in, but there wasn't really much to write home about. Um, Bish taking three wickets for the Indians. Sharma taking two. And Gaia Kawad. Gaia Kawad. I have no idea how to say the name. I hope I'm saying it right. I hope I'm not massacring her name. But as far as I can see, Gaia Quad took two as well. So, you know, South African cricket, in the men's and the, the women's being dominated by India at the moment. Um, things not looking great in that department, the, the sport department there. Um, then last but not least, Bafana Bafana, they took on Mali over the weekend. Um, that was yesterday on Sunday. They won 2-1. Um, Dean Furman stepped up to the spot, the penalty spot that is in the 23rd minute and converted for the for the host, while Temba Zwane, he uh, slotted one home um, just before half time, in injury time and half time in fact. Then for Mali, Seiko Koita, he um, popped up with a consolation goal in the end, it proved, um, was a, we set up a, a, a tense sort of last... 15, 20 minutes there, but you know, um, the boys managed to to hold on for the victory. So well done to Bafana and uh, you know, well done to the to the the Springboks qualifying through to the the World Cup quarter uh, quarterfinals as well. Yes, guys. So that's that's what I have for you on this Monday. Uh, so don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Fair Digest, as well as our online magazine. Um, don't forget to get your comments in below as well. Uh, anything else you guys would love me, uh, like me to, to cover, I'd love to cover everything for you guys. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the Clinton's Corner for a Monday. I'm Clinton Jarman. Thanks for joining me.